Hello, Jumbo viewers. This is Avindian welcoming you to Tabletop Simulator with the board game 1960 The Making of the President, designed by Jason Matthews and Christian Leonard, published in 2007 by Z Man Games, and recently reprinted by GMT Games in 2017. Uh, this game is one that I've played a lot and I really enjoyed for a very long time. But unfortunately, we were traveling, we were moving from Kansas to Ohio uh, for a brief time. Uh, as you know, if you follow the channel for all, that I am from Ohio. But uh, we had to, to move in with some family for a bit. And this game was a casualty. We couldn't afford to take all of our board games with us. And so we had to make... A very hard decision of which games we kept, and this was not one of those games. Uh, but I got the 2017 reprint from GMT Games, uh, which does feature a handful of new rules, but it's otherwise the same game. So I'm going to be applying the newer rules to this game, but we'll have the older artwork, and there's a few fewer cards. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I said that before I start talking about the game, in case you go out and buy a copy for yourself and you're like, Abby, this looks nothing like the game you told me about. This is based on the older uh, initial original edition of the game. I don't actually know what happened to... I don't know why there are no reprints in the Steam Workshop, but there is this mod. Um, and it's the only way I could play the game, and I wanted to play the game, so here we are. 1960 is a game that takes place over nine turns. <clears throat> I think each one is meant to is meant to symbolize like a couple of months or something like that. I don't remember. But each turn, uh, each side gets a certain number of cards listed here on the turn track, so six or seven. Um, and then we each take turns playing a card. Any remaining cards either get discarded or put in the campaign strategy deck, which we'll talk about later on. Um, and then turn six is a special turn, the debates, as is turn nine, the election day turn. Um, for those of you who aren't aware of the history behind this, the 1960 presidential election was the second closest in history based on the winner winning the popular vote. So there have been some elections that were actually closer but in those cases, because of the Electoral College, actually the loser of the popular vote won the election. But this is the second closest of those where the popular vote winner, John F. Kennedy, did win the election. It's also a very popular turning point in alternate history where people like, what would happen if Nixon would have won the election? Because the difference was less than one percentage. Was difference was less than one percent. Which is huge, right? That's a very tiny difference. Um, only one election was closer, and the first person to mention it in the comments will either get to pick a game for me to cover on the channel later on, or I can insert you as a character into one of the into one of my videos uh, when the time is right. So if you are that lucky person, um, I will reach out to you and we'll figure out what to do next as far as what your preferences are. So, let's look at the board, because the board is extremely important, and if you know the American political system already, this won't be a shock to you, but if you don't, it'll be helpful for me to go over how this works. So, in the United States, people don't actually vote directly for president. Instead, they vote for electors. In the modern-day United States, there's 538 electors based on the number of congressmen plus the number of senators. Um, in real life, uh, I'm sorry, in 1960, there was only 537 electors because D.C. didn't get any. And Lewis, D.C. is not even represented on the map because they didn't have any electoral votes. Uh, even Wyoming had three. <clears throat> so what happens is, I live in Texas right now, right? If I had been living in 1960 and I voted for John F. Kennedy, and that's the majority of the people in the state of Texas, uh, he would get 24 of the electoral votes. And you need half plus one in order to be the president. Um, that is how the game works. 
Uh, and that's how the American political system works. I don't want to get into a whole bunch of this is how it should work or anything like that. I'm just telling you how it works because you need to know that to understand how the game functions. So let's pick that state, Texas, and let's talk about what each space on the board means. Texas was worth, at the time, 24 electoral votes. It's one of the bigger states in the country, but there's a couple that have more uh, votes, like Pennsylvania, New York, and California. I think Pennsylvania has more votes. Yeah, 32. And so does Ohio at 25. And Illinois at 27. So I guess Texas was a good bit smaller in those days. Relative to the rest of the country, of course. Now Texas is a number two, only behind California. <clears throat> So, at the end of the game, if nobody controls this state, it will lean Democrat because that's how it did. Um, that's how it did historically, at the time, which means the Kennedy player will get these twenty-four votes at the end of the game. But the Nixon player can come over here and place cubes on this and try to win that for himself. Uh, if you see a donkey or an elephant on a space, it means that they start with a certain number of cubes to represent early campaigning. And both players start in their home states. So, for instance, uh, Kennedy starts in Massachusetts. He was a senator from Massachusetts. And Richard Nixon was in California. Richard Nixon had just been the vice president under Dwight Eisenhower. So that is what the board is about, and Kennedy and Nixon compete over the course of these several turns to place their cubes and remove their opponent's cubes so that when the game ends, they have the most electoral votes. That's how all this works. That's the basic structure of the game. Um, there's one additional piece of setup, because the person who made the mod made a slight goof. You start with 12 cubes each, not 10. Uh, so I'm going to grab two of the Kennedy cubes. And then we can see this bag. Boop. Shuffle, shuffle. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Each turn of the game, I'm just going to pick a card at random, and then I'm going to reshuffle it. Oh, there's one other thing I need to do really quickly here. I need to remove the other hand zones. There should only be two, white and green. Otherwise, cards get stuck, and it's kind of a pain in the butt. So there we go. That's done. And I can go back to sitting at the spot here. So here is one of the cards in the game. And every card in the game can be played in one of two ways. You can play the card as an event if it's your card. So the elephant down here... So this is actually a Nixon card, which means Kennedy can't play it as an event. So then instead, if he plays the card uh, for what are called campaign points or CP, those let you do one of three things. You can either go campaigning uh, to put cubes on the map. You can invest in media support, which can make placing cubes easier under certain circumstances. Or you can bet on the issues. Um, which can give you powerful bonuses at the end of each turn. Uh, if you play the card as the event text says, the card is removed from the game at the end of playing it. Otherwise, it goes in a discard pile and you can see it again later on. These cards also serve two additional functions at the end of the game. First of all, you may see that tank in the bottom left corner. That means when the debates come, this card could help the Nixon player win the defense issue. You'll see there's a tank there and there's a tank there. There's also one other thing that these cards are good for. And I believe, let me quickly check this out. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. And I believe that it is actually irrelevant. Yes. Okay. Uh, the other thing that they can do is they can offer you support checks on election day based on the state in the bottom right. So CO is Colorado. And here the icon doesn't matter. 
So if we're going for the debates, this would only help Richard Nixon win the defense debate. But if we're electing or if we're doing the electoral vote at the end of the game, uh, it's whoever has the card. So you want to make sure that you're picking states that you're not winning so that you have a chance to take them over. That is what every card lets you do. So every car, every turn, each side plays one card, and you either take the event or you use the campaign points for various and sundry things. In addition, both Nixon and Kennedy have their own cards that give you five campaign points, but you can only use this once every great while. Because uh, once you play it, you flip the card, and there's only certain things that let you unexhaust the card. Um, so this is a very powerful card that you can play if you need an ad immediate advantage. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And the first thing we're always going to do every turn is determine who has the initiative. Now the person with the initiative determines who goes first. That doesn't mean you go first. It just means that you get to pick. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw out of this political capital bag, we're going to draw two cubes. And they are both red. So what that means is that Nixon ends up getting the initiative. So I'm going to switch over to the Nixon side. And I'm going to draw six cards. So I'm going to quickly analyze my hand and explain what I'm thinking. And then we'll decide who goes first. So a quick overview you always want to focus on is the icons at the bottom of the card. I cannot play any donkey cards as an event unless it also has the element, like this Nikita Khrushchev one. This can be played by other person as an event. Why does this matter? If I play a card like, let's say, Bobby Kennedy, the Kennedy player can discard one momentum token and force me to play it, to, and he can gain the event when I'm done, which is huge. This is an incredibly powerful card, and I definitely don't want the Kennedy player to get this. Unless it's at the end of the turn, when it's not going to hurt so much. Um, do I have a good hand for getting started here? This Republican TV spots card is a pretty powerful starter. Because when your, camp, when your candidate goes to a state, it's harder for the other side to place cubes there. And conversely... Um, you protect it. That would actually be a pretty massive opening salvo in this game. Would be Nixon goes to New York and I get to play three media support cubes, which will just really strong, really strengthen my ability. I don't have to place them even in the same place. I can put it in three different places. That's awesome. Uh, in fact, immediately Nixon's going to say, I'm, I'm going first. And the Kennedy player's like, uh-oh. Why is he so eager to go first? Then I play Republican TV spots. So I'm going to go all the way to New York. Now, New York actually has the most electoral votes in the game at this point. It's got 45. This is a huge prize, and it would go to Kennedy if I didn't do something about that. But that's not all. I also get to place three media support cubes. And I'm going to put one in the east. I'm going to put one in the south. Because Kennedy's got a very strong advantage in the south, as you can see here. Only two states would go to me. Florida and Tennessee. But most of the rest would go for Kennedy. And then I'm also going to put one in the Midwest. Because the Midwest is going to be a major battleground for us. <clears throat> Because all different states want to do all different things. So it's a very big deal. This is going to be where we're going to be spending a lot of our time fighting. Uh, but I finish my turn. I don't get any rest cubes, which those go into the political capital bag. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the card. And it is now Mr. John F. Kennedy's side. And he's going to draw his six cards. Oh dear, he has a very bad hand, for his sake. <clears throat> he 
He's got three events that are two events that are Nixon only and two that are both. Hmm. You can always spend two momentum markers in order to play the card without the other person getting being able to do that. So you got Soviet economic growth. This makes economy more important, which gives you a better bonus if you're leading it. But I don't want to play that now because I'm not leading in it. I'd want to spend some cubes to improve that. New England is a really great starting card, though. Because it gives me a bunch more state support. Although, here's what's really interesting. One of the big rules changes to the game is... You used to be able to play state support... Even, uh, even if it was, say, in the opposing candidate state... Without support checks in the way the game was originally designed. And they said, uh-uh. You've got to make support checks. Not actually just put the cubes on there. So there's actually an element of risk to this one that didn't exist in the original version of the game because I'd have to make support checks, which means pulling cubes out of the bag instead of just pulling them out of my supply. So that's not great. I don't want to play this card because it's just going to make Nixon more powerful unless I'm going to waste both my momentum markers. Oh. That's a very fine opening card. I can discard cards that I think suck and try to draw some better ones. Ooh. I really like that idea, so that's actually what we're gonna do. We're gonna play a new frontier. Now, we gain two rest cubes. So two of these cubes go in my coffee cup. And at the end of this turn, uh, they'll go into the political capital bag. I get to discard as many cards as I want to from my hand and draw some replacements. Um, Old South is bad. It's very, very bad for Kennedy early on in the game. Discarded. I don't want any of the Nixon only events. What have you done, game? The cards are sticking together. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> and I don't love this card either, but it could be helpful. So I'm gonna, I discarded three cards and I'm gonna draw three. And whatever these are, I'm stuck with them. And these are now much better cards. These are much more powerful cards. I like this a lot. Um, so we're going to go ahead and remove this card from the game. Because I played it as an event. And we advance to phase two. And it's as simple as that, compadres. That is how this works. Now... As Nixon, I want New York hard. This is an amazing opportunity that I cannot let slip through my, my pudgy little fingers. So I want to play a big bombshell card to do that. I could play Hostile Press Corps, but to be quite frank, that would be disastrous. <clears throat> and I'm not sure it's worth burning my two momentum markers to stop that from happening. So instead, I'm pulling out the big guns. I'm going to flip over Tricky Dick. I get five CP. I'm going to put four cubes in New York. And then I decide what I'm going to do with my fifth one. Uh, I'm going to go to Pennsylvania. Moving within a region is free. I'm going to put a cube there. <clears throat> I highly approve. Why did I put exactly four cubes there? This means I'm now carrying the state. Which means that even if I'm not there, Kennedy still has to do support checks in order to place cubes on New York. Or at this point, remove my cubes. However, here's the interesting part. If someone has media support cubes, they get to ignore support checks in that region. 
So this might be a strategy that good old JFK tries a little bit later on here. Um, I'm checking something for support checks here. Okay, you do do it one at a time. Okay, that's what I was checking. All right. So Kennedy now feels pretty doggone nervous. Because I've just basically earned... If the game ended right now, I just gained 77 electoral votes with one card. And there's a couple of options. There's a couple of ways that I could counter that. First, I could push the media support angle and then use that to eventually start wearing down New York. However, I could also ignore him for now. Three issue support in civil rights would be absolutely massive. And because of the way that issue support works, where the first cube per phase is one CP, but all others are two, three cubes is basically giving me five CP worth of actions. And it makes civil rights more powerful. And I think I'm going to go ahead and play this card now. I'm going to go ahead and play Martin Luther King Arrested. And I gain three issue support on civil rights, but I'm going to move the it first. So these two change places. And again, removed from the game. The Kennedy player now advances to phase three, and we switch back. Touch record deck. Um, that's actually a terrible Nixon impersonation, but in my defense, I was not alive when this election happened, so. Give me some slack. Now, here's the bad news. But th this is about mitigating the risks. I would very much like to keep one of these two cards for my campaign strategy. And I think I want this one because it could give me a big boost in economics during the, um, what you call it, the debates. I don't want to lose that. That does mean that I'd be playing three events that could, three cards that could be very beneficial to the Kennedy player. But I want to make sure that that's, that I mitigate these bad parts of this uh, to the extent that I can. Um, Johnson jeered in Dallas is a decent event. But they have no state support in Texas. And I have no reason to believe that he's going south anyway. So I don't want to play that card. I'm going to play... So here's, here's one thing I don't have to worry about. As long as I'm not going to play a card as an event, I don't have to worry about this. <clears throat> and if the Kennedy player wastes a momentum marker triggering the event for something I wasn't going to do anyway, who cares? So I'm going to go ahead and play Jackie Kennedy for some campaign points. Um, I finish resolving this, and then Kennedy gets to decide if he wants to trigger it. That is his wife, by the way. Uh, that was John F. Kennedy's wife. Um, so what do I want to do as a Nixon? I really want a stranglehold on Pennsylvania. So I'm going to go ahead and use all three of my CP to go two, three, four. I am now carrying both New York and Pennsylvania, which means if I leave the East to go campaigning in the Midwest, um, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Now, Kennedy has an interesting strategic decision to make. He does not know what I'm planning. He does not know what cards I have in my hand. So, does he want to spend a momentum marker in order to trigger this event? And 
And this is one of these times where I'm kind of unfairly biased. Because I know, because I'm playing both sides, that this would be a very stupid thing to spend the momentum marker on. But this, if I had a handful of Nixon cards, this would be a major shot in the arm for the Kennedy player. It would cripple a lot of my options. But the thing is that while the events are very powerful, a few of them are game are game changing. So I think JFK is going to say, I've got better uses for my momentum markers. You do you, bro. And then this card does not get removed from the game because it was never played as an event. It just goes in the discard pile. If I'm John F. Kennedy, I'm tearing my hair out because this card in particular is now very not valuable to me. So I've got a couple of options here. One of them is I can go down south and I can start trying to build up some support there. Make sure that I don't lose this. However, if I wanted to get really sneaky, look what Richard Nixon did. He left California entirely undefended. That is an extremely tempting That is so tempting that he's going to do it. He's going to say, I'm using my own candidate. It's going to cost me one, two to get to the West. But then I'm going to put three support in California. Now, if I'm Nixon, this bugs me, but not by as much as you'd think. Because historically, I've claimed 77 votes that went to the Democrats. And he's only gotten 32 that went to the Republicans. So I'm still out ahead by quite a lot. But that is definitely annoying. For sure. What am I going to do with my turn here? I do not want to play this card unless I'm prepared to burn both of my momentum markers. But I have no way to get more momentum markers either unless I start investing in some events. So maybe that's what I should do. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and play Bobby Kennedy. And this is when John F. starts to pick up his momentum marker. But I say, oh, by the way. no dice and he goes shucks because he really wanted me to have to play that event as an event there's my rust cubes i'm gonna play for cp and i'm gonna go ahead and put one on defense um notice i can't put a second down because you have to spend everything on the same thing and it's only it's not once per issue it's once per phase and it's only one cp so there's nothing I can do. It's kind of wasted, but I wanted to make sure that Kennedy didn't have a trick up his sleeves to get him a big boost in defense. Hmm, excuse me. So Kennedy says, that's fine. Hmm. That could be a powerful way to try to erode, but then I might as well just play this card. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go ahead and play New England as an event. Oh, sorry, that got discarded. And I'm gonna do support checks because it's never gonna get any easier. If I can start pushing them out of New York, my life will be much happier. So a support check is pretty simple. 
I'm going to take a cube out of the bag. If it's red, nothing happens. If it's blue, uh, it would kick him out. It's red, so that didn't happen. And I can only spend two, do two checks per state, so I'm going to do it again. And it's also red. Now, it may seem like that was a wasted turn, and it was in one sense of the, of the equation, but there's also now fewer red cubes in this bag, which means the next time I need to do a support check, there's a higher likelihood that I'll succeed. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drop two cubes in Massachusetts. Just in case Nixon gets any squirrely ideas. And then it would make the most sense to go ahead and try to secure New Jersey, but I don't think New Jersey is one of my choices here. That's Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maine, New York, Rhode Island, and Vermont. I'm going to go ahead and put my fifth cube in New Hampshire. Because otherwise, this is going to go to Nixon at the end of the game. So this is four more votes. Is it going to make a big difference? Probably not. But it's also worth it. Because anything I can do to make my life easier... I can't actually can't pick New Hampshire. The game is saving you for myself. I guess in that case I'll put it in Connecticut. Because it's the biggest prize of those left to me. So we're each going to play one more card. One is going to go in the uh, campaign track and the other one just disappears. I'm going to go ahead and play Johnson, Jared, and Dallas. I'm just going to do some more CPs. I see a chance to get a free momentum marker. I'm going to take it. And again, I'm wasting a CP. And that CP is gone forever. But what I've done is I've given myself a pretty, a pretty potent advantage at the end of this turn. That Kennedy is going to have to deal with one way or the other, either by playing something else or by getting involved and spending his something on something I bet he probably wouldn't want to do. But here's what I don't know, which is that John F. Kennedy doesn't actually care about that. He's got a very powerful card that can cause me a lot of grief. And that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to play Henry Luce. And this talks about a new element of the game. This is an endorsement marker. So normally speaking, if at the end of the game, there are no tokens in Washington, it's going to go for the Republicans. Unless there's an endorsement marker. And that's exactly what Kennedy's going to do. Is he's going to come over here and he's going to drop in an endorsement. I now have to be a lot more aggressive fighting for the West if the West is something that I want. Um, and it's not that this is going to change the game hugely, but there's a lot of states out here, some with very respectable vote totals. And so Kennedy's like, that's the end of the game, or the end of the turn, rather. And now, um, this gets removed from the game. And each one of us is now going to pick a card to put in the campaign strategy. He's going to pick her block. And then his other card gets discarded. The reason that happened, by the way, is because we both played our campaign cards. But you can never have any, you can't keep cards. And then as Nixon, I'm actually doing this out of order. This is actually the campaign strategy phase, but I always do it first. But I am doing this out of order, technically. And then you get discarded. Uh, what actually happens first is the momentum phase. So the first thing that happens every momentum phase is you lose half of your momentum markers. So in this case, Kennedy loses one, and it's always rounded down. The second thing that happens in the momentum phase is that we determine the issues. However, the person with the most media support can get really sneaky and swap any two issues. Nixon has three cubes, Kennedy has none. Civil rights just aren't as important to the country right now. And now I get a much better benefit when we actually come to doing the rewards. 
Uh, so, Kennedy, as you can see here, gets one momentum marker. I get a choice as Nixon. Do I want a momentum marker or an endorsement? I've got the first place issue. And momentum is, generally speaking, more valuable. But I am kind of worried about Nixon, about Kennedy getting involved in the West. So I'm actually going to go ahead and pick endorsement instead. And I got an endorsement in the South, which is actually not bad at all. Because you'll notice that the South actually leans very heavily to Nixon or to, to Kennedy. And then I get the first place of reward, which is a momentum marker and an endorsement. And I got an endorsement in the East. Um, that's fine, I guess. I didn't get the actual endorsement that I wanted, but I did get a couple of good ones, so I'm not going to complain too much. The very last step is issue decay. Each one of these issues is going to lose one cube. So now defense and the economy will be up for grabs in the next turn. This is technically when you play the campaign strategy cards where I do that, and then we do the rest phase, which is take our cubes and put them in the bag. And then we shuffle the bag. Because otherwise you just pull out the ones that you just put in. Very important to remember to shuffle the bag. And then we start our second turn of the game. We're still drawing six cards, uh, so we're going to do the initiative check first. One blue, two blue. So Kennedy gets to think about what he wants to do first. Now, he's got himself three Nixon-only events, which is pretty scary. He doesn't love that. However, Nixon's only got one momentum marker. So I could try to lure him out to playing that momentum marker when he might not want to. So I can some snick something even bigger later on. Because recount is an enormously dangerous card. Like, this is a game breaker because he gets three free support shocks in any state he wants. That could completely change the entire game. I definitely don't want Nixon getting this. Uh, Harvard Brain Trust is a really great card for the debates, and it helps him win the debates which can give him some pretty important uh, advantages. But I also don't want him to get opposition research either. This is going to be a really good turn for issues. I've got two cards that basically instant let me dominate an issue. Who do I want to go first? I need to see what Nixon's going to do before I do anything. Because most of these cards, timing isn't going to matter. So I'm going to say, hey, Tricky Dick, you get to go first. He's all, aroo, maybe so. So here we go. And did Nixon get a powerful hand or what? I have got an incredibly good hand to try to take Florida. And I do want to go down south because I want to cause some I want to cause some havoc in his backyard. Yeah, this is massive. This is actually a really good hand for me. Uh, and I'm gonna get more momentum markers. All right. 
so actually the first thing I want to do... Do I have a card that gives me some defense? Yes. Um... Yeah, because one issue support and defense is actually fine. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead, actually. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and use Hurricane Donna as the event. Nixon goes to Florida. And I think I get one... And I get one state support there. And even more valuable, I get a momentum marker. Very big opening. And now Kennedy's like, fuck. I don't like that he did that. Uh, he's just going to go ahead and play the Harvard Brain Trust. There's a special spot on the board for these. Because it makes him better in debates. There's no point in keeping this card. He's just going to play it now. But he is not happy at the moment. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is play Peace Without Surrender. No, I'm not. That's actually a waste. I could just play Tokens. Like, these are all seriously brilliant cards. Um, I'm going to keep one of these for my campaign strategy card as Nixon. And I think, incredibly, I think it's going to be the economy. I think this rising food prices, like, as much as I'd love to get an early lead in the economy... Being able to just ransack the South while Kennedy can't stop me is just massive. Like, I can do insane amounts of damage to his Southern, to him in the South. So I'm going to go and play Southern Strategy. This does mean that Kennedy gets one free support in civil rights, but he already had two, so it's not a game breaker for me. I get a Rust Cube. And then I get five state support in the South, no more than two per state. Well, I'm going to put two in Texas. I'm going to take one out of North Carolina and put one there. And then kicking him out of Georgia is not quite as valuable as increasing my lead in Florida. No, actually, give me Virginia. There we go. And it's removed from the game. All right, I'm going to go ahead and play Missile Gap. Kennedy exploited the notion that Eisenhower and Nixon had allowed the Soviets to achieve missile military superiority. This gives him three support and defense. Which definitely doesn't make Nixon happy, but he's going to be a lot less happy once I also pull out Pierre Salinger and basically ensure that these stay mine for most of the game. Oh, I didn't move the phase track marker. Sorry. Um. Well, now I'm never going to want to play Castro as an event. But it doesn't mean that Nixon might not. One state support in Florida, though, would be a support check because I'm actually there right now. So I'm going to go ahead and play Castro for just for campaign positioning.
And I'm gonna go ahead and put one cube on the economy. And again, I burn it off. This is me hedging my bets. And I don't know that Nixon has that other bombshell to drop on me. But I also don't want to move from Florida in case Nick in case Kennedy decides to trigger this. He has no reason not to. Uh, basically, he gets a momentum marker regardless. She's going to say, yeah, okay. Hey, look, I got a momentum marker. And then he gets to make a free support check in Florida. So he's going to take a cube out of the bag. And it's red. Oh, well. It was worth it to him. And this card is removed from the game. And it is... Miss Doc Kennedy. It's his turn. There we go. That was a good Kennedy impersonation. And I'll never do it again. Um... Which of these would be worse if he triggered it? I'm going to do something that's going to seem a little bit destructive, but this is way too powerful a card to waste on the debate track. Like, this way I can get all three of the issues this turn, and there's almost nothing Nixon can, Nixon can do about it, which is gigantic, right? Um, I don't want him getting three CP for free, but I really don't want him getting this recount event. So I'm going to play recount, and before Nixon can do anything, I'm going to spend both my momentum markers. I don't want him taking a chance of getting this, and Nixon's like, ah, oh, direct. But, you know, uh, it's four CP for Kennedy. Uh, he's going to drop a cube in California. He's now carrying the state. And now he's got three more points to spend. Where would he like to go? I think it's time for him to get active in the Midwest. So I'm going to go two to change regions to Wisconsin. Three to put a cube in Wisconsin. Then he's going to go to Ohio, and he's going to kick me out of Ohio. And then this moves up. And this is both good for me and bad for Nixon, in the sense that... I don't know why I keep saying me on both sides. It's both good and bad for Nixon. It's good because I can now play any event I want without fear of repercussions for it. But on the other hand, it does mean that this really awesome event isn't one that I can grab. So, you win some, you lose some. Uh, I'm going to play Joe Kennedy, which John F. Kennedy's going to be like, God damn it. Because it's actually a pretty dangerous card, but... And I get three uh, campaign points... What do I want to do? I don't love all the shit you've caused in California. So I'm actually going to invest in media support, which I was not expecting to do. But it's a way for me to break his stranglehold. So I'm going to go ahead and put two cubes in the west. And one more cube in the east. Which is going to be able to switch issues as much as I want. And then this card just gets discarded. It doesn't get removed. And we switch over to Kennedy. And Kennedy wants... Kennedy is in a really nasty position here. Because he's got to play two more cards. And so the question becomes, does he essentially punt running the table on issues? 
That is such a huge advantage. It's three momentum markers and an endorsement, or two endorsements and two momentum markers. This is too good. I cannot justify playing this card without... I can't justify putting it on the debates. I have to spend this, this card. One support kicks Nixon out, and then the other two get placed on the economy. He's going to win on the issue so he can get really, inv really involved in campaigning next turn. Maybe he'll get a better hand and get some stuff that really helps him win the... Uh, start making some bombshells on the campaign trail. So, last turn. Um... I think I'm going to go campaigning. I think it's just the smartest thing I can do with these two remaining cards. I'm going to play this card. I get two more Rust Cubes. And I get two CP. Where would I like to go? What would I like to do? I'm going to kick him out of Georgia and Alabama. Oh, sorry. I'm just going to kick him out of Georgia then, because that's two electoral votes. And if he wants to place more cubes there, it's going to cost him because of my media control. And because of my endorsement, this is going to go to me, unless Kennedy does something about it. All right. So, I got one last card to play. And as much as I don't want to play this card, if I don't, I have to put it in the strategy deck. And the ability for the Nixon player to get a giant boost to defense. But then again... That's one issue. Maybe. And this card is effectively worthless to Nixon. Like, there's no point in spending a momentum marker to gain a momentum marker, if that's all you get from it. So that's what he's going to do. Not what I expected to do, but I think it just makes more sense. Uh, he gets two rest cubes. He's going to spend two on campaigning. Um, he's going to put a blue cube in Ohio. Go sit over there. Think about what you've done. And he's going to go to Kentucky and put a blue cube there. So, we have now completed. Uh, this gets discarded because it was never triggered. Um, the next thing we do is we do momentum, which means half the momentum markers disappear, rounded down, so I lose one marker. The leader media support can swap issues, but I'm not gonna as Nixon because they've got all three of them, which is pretty bad news. Um, then issue stuff happens, so you're gonna get two momentum markers, guaranteed. And an endorsement guaranteed. And you got an endorsement in the West. Which puts another one of your markers out there. Making it that much harder for me to overturn this endorsement. Now, so the question becomes, what is more valuable to me as Kennedy? Um, potentially an endorsement or another momentum marker. And here's the thing. I have not seen very many powerful Kennedy-specific events hit the table yet. And I can never be sure whose hand they're going to end up in. So there's a real argument for getting a third momentum marker. However, 
I am somewhat concerned about how active he's been in the East, which is my stronghold. I've got to go for the endorser marker on the chance I get an endorsement in the East. So that's what I'm going to do. And I get a major endorsement, which is an in more, which is an endorsement marker anywhere that I want. I'm going to kick him out of the East. I'm going to be like, you want to spend your time and effort campaigning in the East? Go for it. But you're going to earn it. And so Nixon's Nixon's like, Aru, maybe so. Uh, and then that happens. Uh, finally, one cube gets taken off of each issue. And then we go to campaign strategy and rest. And then all the rest cubes get put into the political capital bag. I have a lot of rest cubes as Nixon. Um, Kennedy just doesn't have as many. God damn it, game. Put it in the bag. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. All right, let's do an initiative check as we are now in turn number three. The debates are creeping up on us. Oh, our, for our first time, we got to do three cubes. Nixon gets the initiative. I know it seems like the political capital bag is not that important right now. It's going to be absolutely ginormous when we get to election day. Trust me on that. So, uh, I switch over to Team Nixon, and I'm going to go ahead and grab myself not one, not two, but six amazing campaign cards. And what do we got here? A very mixed bag. A very, very mixed bag. Uh, I've got two events that are very powerful for Kennedy. Um, maybe not super powerful. I ain't playing Ken Air if I can avoid it at all. Uh, the trial of Gary Powers is kind of bad because I'm not going to be able to get defense anytime soon. Early returns from Connecticut could be a game breaker for either side. Going first to do stump speech would be extremely potent or using it to play gathering momentum. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to say, I'm going to go first, and I'm going to play Stump Speech. Oh, I never discarded that card. Here we go. So I get as many momentum markers as he has. Oh, wait, that's actually stupid. Never mind. I'm going to go first, but I'm not going to waste that card. I'm going to play Gathering Momentum in the East. Whoever leads more states in the East gains a momentum marker, which is me. I lead three. No. Yes, I lead four. He leads three. So that's worth one momentum marker. Nice. And I get one cube in every state that has no nothing in it. And this is just going to drive John F. Kennedy absolutely batshit insane these gathering momentum cards are incredibly powerful um and that just shows you why like all of a sudden the east has gone from a democratic stronghold to a liability for them and we're going to be it's going to be interesting to see what kind of cards that kennedy gets to try to mitigate the damage from that first card did he get a gathering momentum? No. Oh. This is a very potent card. This stops a lot of the nastier events from happening in the game. For them. Ha 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 
High Hopes is awesome. He definitely doesn't want that card being played. He doesn't want to play primetime television because he'll take over it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play the Greater Houston Ministerial Association. It's a prevention event. And this will stop them from playing some of the more powerful events as events. Not the most thrilling turn, but an important one. Now. What would I like to play now? I'm going to go ahead and play Stump Speech as CP. Because it's no it's of no benefit to him to activate it. Because we have the same number of momentum markers. Um, I'm going to spend one cube in Georgia. I'm going to use my second to move into the Midwest to Illinois. I'm going to go three. And I'm going to come up here and take Michigan for four. And then I discard the card. So, as the game stands right now, Kennedy is in incredibly bad shape. Because I have taken most of the most populous states that he normally would feel pretty confident about. Like, New York is mine. Pennsylvania is mine. Ohio is his, as is Kentucky, but I've taken Illinois and Michigan. And I've got Texas. So, Kennedy needs to do some campaigning. He's been putting this on for way too long. Um, and he's got a number of really weak cards. I'm going to use the Gallup poll. And if I'm Nixon, I'm not going to trigger this event. Like, changing these orders just don't matter right now. But Kennedy's got to get on the horn and do some campaigning. Um, which means go to Illinois and remove a cube for one. Add a cube to Illinois for two. And I'm going to have a hard time in Michigan. So I'm actually just going to go and add a third cube there. Or a third, use my third point there. So now Kennedy has swapped Illinois over back to the Democrats, and because he's there, it would be harder if I didn't have media support. Oh, and then this card gets discarded. I keep forgetting to do that. <coughs> hmm... These are all things that Kennedy is going to want to trigger. And I'm actually going to save the Trial of Gary Powers as my um, campaign strategy card. Oh, I didn't move the cube up. There we go. And we, I really don't want him to, I really don't want him to use any of these. Ken Air is too powerful. I'd almost rather play both of my momentum markers to stop him from using it. Early returns from Connecticut actually benefits Kennedy. Because basically it lets you lock in California. Um... Yeah, this is actually a pretty weak hand. I'm going to go and play Profiles and Courage. 
Uh, and Kennedy is going to say, yeah, okay, I'll spend a momentum on that. That's a pretty good event for me. And I'll put that in front of him once I'm done. So that's two rest cubes. And I've got two points to spend any way I like. Nixon wants to get involved in the issues, but he really can't. Not yet, anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and play one cube in Michigan. Go to Minnesota and put a cube there. A very powerful use of two cubes. And I'm going to put this in front of Kennedy to make sure he knows that he has this ability. So, he can redraw a failed support check. Which means... Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, wait, positioning issue actions? Yeah, this card is fine. There is no earthly reason why Kennedy would give two shits about this. Like, Nixon triggers it, but Kennedy's got a lead in everything. So, yeah, that's a no-brainer. Hmm. So, uh, Nixon's like, I'm not going to waste some momentum mark on that. That's dumb. I can redraw support checks. I could start making a big play, which is start trying to erode his support in Pennsylvania or New York. Alternatively, I can stay in the Midwest and try to buttress that. But it would be a real tragedy to waste this ability while I've got it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to head to the east. I'm going to go to New York. That's one CP because it took one to move there. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw a support check. And boom. Nixon is starting to lose support in New York. He also no longer carries the state. Which means I don't have to worry about support checks. So I'm actually probably going to go try to weaken his hold on Pennsylvania now. All right, so what is Nixon going to do? I cannot avoid playing Ken Air. I cannot not play this card unless I burn it on the debate track and I don't want to be bad at the debates. Can you look at your debate cards once you've placed them down? Or can you never look at them again once they're there? Uh, let me see here. It doesn't say, actually. It doesn't say whether you can or can't look at your debate cards after you've played them. So I have to assume that you can Yeah, I have to assume that you can. Um, hmm. This is a way to win the economy issue, though. Hmm. <sighs> Uh, oh, I didn't say that I triggered that issue, so it just gets discarded. I am really stuck at this point. Like, I don't want this to come into play as an election event. I think this is actually going to hurt Nixon. It's not going to help Kennedy. Unless I get over there and start wearing down California. Because here's the thing. I know, unless Kennedy has some sort of secret weapon, and I obviously don't know if he does or not, 
that he's going to be spending most of his time using his uh, event to wear down New York and Pennsylvania. Which means this is a great chance for me to try to retake California. So, I think I go ahead and play this card for CP. And Kennedy's going to say, it is easier for me, like, more support checks in California would only benefit Kennedy. So he's going to go ahead and spend a momentum marker to trigger this event once I'm done resolving it. And I was afraid of that, but I also knew he only had one momentum marker, and I'd much rather him burn it on this card than on this card. Um, and so I get two CP, one to California. I don't have to make support checks because of my media presence, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove the top cube. And Kennedy here shrugs his shoulders and says, you know what, you were going to do that eventually, Nixon. I saw your game. Now. I have a giant issue right now, and that's the Dwight Eisenhower. It could be a big, it could, this could be a major play in terms of regaining the East, wearing down New York and especially Pennsylvania. However, this is going to give him seven state support anywhere, no more than one per state. But I, the other, the alternative is basically handing civil rights to Ken, to Nick, to, to Nixon during the debates and this is two really bad issues like those two things are bad but i think the debate would be less bad i think honestly giving him civil rights would actually hurt us less than letting him play this card because that's seven support um it's a bunch of free cubes is basically what the debates give you um i have ways to mitigate the damage and this card is just too damn terrible for me like, these cards are equally bad, but this is 7 support and this is 5. So I'm going to go ahead and play primetime television. Nixon eagerly laps that up. He's like, thank you, Kennedy. Uh, he gets a rest cube, and then the 3 CP goes to Kennedy. He's going to come over to Pennsylvania. He gets one support check, and it's blue. So I wear down this stack. Oh, you actually included the player aids. I never even noticed that. How cool. Oh, I'm just using the one on the actual manual. But that is cool. And I never even noticed it. Right. Uh, so that was only one. And then he's going to go back to New York. And he's going to go 2-3. Kennedy is like, I am retaking New York. Press, I am retaking New York, you bastard. Uh, something like that. And Nixon's like, oh no. And I just get to add two support in any state if I have media support cubes. Like for instance... I can put a cube back in Pennsylvania. I can remove two cubes from California. I've still got two left. Uh, 
Uh, where else would I like to add them? I'm going to add one in Texas. And heck, I'm going to add two in Texas. So, no, I can't do that. Yes, I can, because I added one in Pennsylvania, two in Texas, two in California. Done. And uh, all he can do is, all, all the Kennedy player could do that turn was just shrug and be like, I had a choice between a bad option and a really bad option. And here, Nixon sticks his tongue out at Kennedy. He's like, mm, look at this awesome card you could have had, but you spent your momentum earlier. And maybe at this point, Kennedy's thinking of a table flip, but uh, I'm going to kick him out of California and put my own cube there. Uh, Mr. Kennedy goes last, and he's going to play High Hopes. This could be a massive hit help for Kennedy. It all depends on these cards. So I'm going to flip the top two campaign cards. If it's a Kennedy event, it goes into effect. Gathering momentum in the West. As if played by the Kennedy player. So would the Kennedy player play this? Absolutely not. So he would basically say hard pass. Ah, Eisenhower's silence. This would be a way more powerful card if it wasn't the last card he got to play. Uh, but this event has actually happened. That actually ended up backfiring. And then that card is gone. And that card is gone. Alright. So, momentum time. Uh, I have none. Nixon has one, so there's no issue there. Um, remove. Remove. I'm supposed to do this afterwards, but it's fine. Uh, you're going to get two momentum and an endorsement. Another major endorsement. Um, he wants one in the Midwest. And finally, he's going to take a third momentum marker. He doesn't need that many things there. Issues have already decayed. Now we go ahead and do campaign strategy. A boop. And a boop. And that was not played as an event, so it just gets discarded. And we're on to turn four. The debates are right around the corner, my friends. Oh, we didn't put in the rest cubes, did we? Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Okay. Okay. Initiative time. Well, I guess we know who might be going first, or at least gets to draw his cards first. In the actual game, you can both draw your cards simultaneously. I think I mentioned that before, but it's important that you know that it's not mandatory that you draw cards at different times. I'm just doing that so that I can't see what the Kennedy player has until I've decided if I'm going first or not. Oh, this is a premier Nixon hand. Like, there is only one card that's actually bad. And it's one that, that I can actually play to benefit me. I will never have a better chance to play Industrial Midwest. I'm doing it right now. Let's go. And then this is where the Kennedy player is all like, fuck. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna kick him out of Wisconsin for the first cube. Now, because of the endorsement, I won't get Wisconsin unless I spend a cube there, but that's not what I'm all about right now. I'm gonna kick him out of Ohio for the second cube and then put myself in Ohio for the third. I'm going to remove one from Illinois for the fourth. I'm going to remove the second from Illinois for the fifth. 
And I got a rust cube that I forgot to put down. Oh well. So, deleted. Kennedy is like, what do I have to do to actually get a good hand? And maybe he'll get one right now. This is actually a very good hand for him. Um, it's actually an enormous hand for him. So. One, two, three, four, five. He's going to play Gathering Momentum in the South. Because you can never hold this card. So he's going to get another Momentum Marker. And he's going to get a free state support in Tennessee. This is about playing it so that Nixon couldn't. But that is a very reasonable opening play. And then Nixon's going to say, I'm playing Whistle Stop. So this is 7 CP. But you can only spend 1 CP per state. So, Nixon is going to have 1 cube to California. He's going to come up to Washington. 1 cube in Washington. 3. 1 cube in Illinois. For 4. 1 cube in Wisconsin. For five. One more cube in Michigan for six. And one more cube in Ohio for seven. And that concludes Nixon's turn. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and play Fatigue Sets in because there's no point in triggering this because it does no good because we're both exhausted already. Oh, this is a very nice card. That's a very nice card. But I'd have to basically ensure that there's not stuff being played as an event. I probably could have played that one first, but oh well. Um, he's actually playing a lot of stuff as events too, in all honesty. Um, but he's going to do some campaigning. Because he knows he's got the Midwest Gathering Momentum card. He wants to, to get in the thick of it here. So he's going to go a 1... To get to, to the Midwest. A 2 to kick him out. 3 to take over in Illinois. And then 4 to kick him out of Minnesota. And we advance the turn tracker. And that just gets discarded. Nixon is getting sick and tired of being left out. So he's going to play Herb, Cl Herb Klein to add three support, issue support. Because he is doggone tired about getting pushed out. So he's going to do one for the economy, two to kick out Kennedy from defense, and then three to take over defense. So played as an event, remove the card. Um, who is leading in the Midwest right now? Kennedy has three. Nixon has six. Five. And as cool as this card sounds... He's going to play Mid-Atlantic States. So, he's going to get two support in New York, which finally...
puts it back in the Democratic camp. Uh, he is going to kick the Republicans out of New Jersey for his third and fourth. And then he gets a fifth. I guess let's make a let's make a support check to try to kick him out of Pennsylvania. It didn't work. It was worth it. And then that card is removed from the game. Green. Nixon is moving right along here. And he's going to play Southern Revolt and add a bunch of support in the South. And that's a rest cube, too. So we're just firing salvos right now because Kennedy is leading in civil rights. And it's add five state support in the South. No more than two per state. All right. Um, I am going to kick you out of Tennessee and add a cube. I'm going to remove both of your support in Louisiana, and because of my support, my endorsement, that means I'll get it at the end of the game. And let's go ahead and strengthen North Carolina, because states with 14 electoral votes don't grow on trees. And then that card is removed from the game. Uh, yeah, we're each going to be playing two more cards. Actually, this should be here. Um, so here's the thing. I have to play Gathering Momentum. I could remove his Momentum markers, though. And his Issue Support. And because Kennedy plays last, I could then use Gathering Momentum to add issue support. And then Kennedy's Peace Corps goes over there. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play Gav Give Me a Week as an event. You lose a Momentum Marker, and you lose one issue support in each. Uh, one support in each issue. And Nixon's, you know, pretty pissed about this. Because he finally wanted to see, get to see what it was like to get involved in this. Um, knowing what he does. Oh, is it actually there? I should have played Nelson Rockefeller first. Damn it. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and play... Um, I want to make sure I got defense. I'm going to go ahead and play the Great Seal Bug. And sadly, the Henry Cabot Lodge card isn't even in the discard pile. I think it's in the deck. Let me take a quick look. And then I'm going to shuffle the deck. But I'm pretty sure Henry Cabot Lodge is in... Here... Yeah, there it is. I'm going to shuffle that off real quick since I had to take a look to see if it was there. Um, and one issue support in defense isn't nearly as valuable as getting two total issue support. So that's what he's going to do. Remember, first one only costs one cube. The second one costs two CP. So here he goes. And then last but certainly not least, Kennedy looks with exaltation at the fact that I no longer have a momentum marker with Nixon, which means he can't share a gathering momentum, even though I'd really like to. And what does Kennedy want to do? Does Kennedy want to try to get Pennsylvania? Is there a richer prize that he could more easily get? Okay, so he's got four points. He's not going to be able to do much again in Ohio or much in Michigan. Like, he could flip Michigan. 
Which is not nothing, but it's also maybe not enough. But maybe it would be enough. Because you've got... I'm looking at this wrong, I think. I think the best choice is to take advantage of my endorsement in the Midwest. Which is... Remove a cube from Wisconsin. That's one. Remove a cube from Iowa. That's two. Remove a cube from Indiana. That's three. And then stop in Michigan, and I'll remove one cube there as well. Very powerful uh, CP move there. Momentum phase. Uh, I'm going to lose half of mine as Kennedy, but I don't really care because that was still a pretty good hand for me. Uh, Nixon doesn't have any. Uh, issue support. Uh, Kennedy. Oh, I can also switch the order, but it doesn't matter. Kennedy gets one momentum marker. Nixon is guaranteed one momentum marker, but not one of his. Uh, actually, I always have to have an order. Um, I need the momentum. So I'm going to get two momentum markers and an endorsement, which is an endorsement in the West. That's not the most helpful thing, but it's also not the least helpful thing either. Then we remove one cube from every issue. And it is now, Compañeros, a wide open field for this. Campaign strategy and rest. Boop and boop. And boop. And boop. Shuffle, shuffle. Up to the first phase, up to turn number five, and let's do our initiative check. Two blue for once Kennedy gets to look at his hand first. Neat. Six cards. Oh, that's a very powerful card. That's a very bad card. That's an okay card. That's a whatever card. That's an extremely bad card. That's an okay card. He's got a lot of cards that would either give him very little benefit or only benefit Nixon. And so I think Kennedy is going to go ahead and simply say, you can go first, Nixon. I enjoy going last. And so he gets his six cards. What do we got here? We were overdue for one of these, I think. Um, um, These are all not great cards. I'm going to go and play Baptist Ministers because he has to go first. You can't choose to not do it. And I'm just going to play it for campaigning. Um, I do have media control, so I can easily pop over to Michigan here and put two cubes there to at least make Kennedy have to deal with this shit. So that's two... And then he's going to go over to Illinois, and he's going to remove the Kennedy cube there. No, it actually, it, we actually more benefit from him to go to Iowa and pick up the Iowa. Yikes. Pick up the Iowa cube so that he has a bit more strength there. And Kennedy says... You did a bad job of shaving. I'm giving myself another advantage in the debates. 
And he definitely doesn't like that. There's nothing he can do about it. Oh, damn it. I definitely should have been spending that one card for other things. I really don't want him getting Adlai Stevenson either, though. Mm. I am going to play Nixon's Pledge. But I'm going to spend my only two momentum markers to not let that happen for him. I got discarded. And I'm going to go because I want defense and I want the economy. Uh, so I'm going to put one on defense and one on the economy. So that's three of my four points. The other point just fizzles. And I discard this card. Back to Kennedy. And now here's where Kennedy wants to play Citizens for Nixon Lodge. Because if I had any momentum tokens, he could really do a number on me. But he can't. So he's going to get two campaign points. Um... So he's going to go to Indiana and Wisconsin and drop a cube off in each one of them. And then advance this to number three, and this just gets discarded. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and play the Cold War. And as I am the leader in defense, I trigger the event and it's five support anywhere, no more than one per state. Uh, I'm gonna put, no, I should keep strengthening my hand in Louisiana for one. Um, where else do I want some support? Kick him out of Illinois for two. Add to Ohio for three. Uh, add to Oregon for four. And add in North Carolina again for five. And that gets removed from the game. Kennedy. He's going to drop this bombshell while I don't have any momentum markers. And I'm like, no, that's such a good event. That's so incredibly powerful. But I'm just kind of like, hmm. And Nixon is enraged at the idea of not being able to play this card, but whatever. What is he going to use his, his points on? I think... He's going to stay in the Midwest. He's going to keep causing trouble. One in Wisconsin... Pack two in Wisconsin. And let's also go and reinforce Indiana. And then turn four. I'm going to play stock market in decline. Which 
which is also good for one rust cube. And I get two support in New York, which flips New York from Democrat to Republican. Delete. Uh, why do I still have this card in front of me? Oh, because I guess I was taunting myself. A reasonable thing to do with, with cards, right? Um. Hmm. We're kind of running out of places where this can really do damage. So if I play, again, why do I care? He can't trigger it. He doesn't have any momentum markers. Yeah. I could play this to get civil rights and then trigger the civil rights thing, which is, but these are both pretty much the same. However, getting the choice between a momentum or endorsement is huge. So I'm going to go ahead and play voter registration drive. Two rest cubes. And I'm just going to put a single cube on civil rights. And then I discard the card. Oh, and then I increase that to number five. We switch back to Mr. Nixon, who hasn't had the best turn. Um... Oh, fuck. Uh, I miscalculated. Like, triggering this event is bad. Triggering this event is catastrophic. However, it would then go into my debate stack. And I really don't like the sound of that either. But I think we have to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and play uh, the Michigan card. And Kennedy's like, I'm going to lose uh, a momentum anyway. I'm going to trigger that. And I get two CP for Nixon. But he's going to spend them both in Illinois. Because remember, your play always goes into effect before the opponent triggers the event. So then he gets dragged to Michigan, and he loses one support there. Which is an extremely worthwhile use of a momentum marker, by the way. Oh, that guy played his event, so it's removed from the game. And finally... I get to pick one more card, and I'm going to play my lunch counter sit-ins, as the event says. Civil rights is now the number two issue instead of the number three. And this gets removed from the game. I still get to add three state support anywhere, no more than one per state. I'm going to kick Nixon out of New York for one. Um, I'm going to reduce support in Illinois and in Michigan. No, sorry. Illinois and let's do a support check. Awesome. Pennsylvania. All right. And then that goes back in the political and the Kennedy cube bag. Okay. Momentum. Half of momentum is lost. That's one for Kennedy. Uh, media player gets to switch two issues. He's going to say, yeah, I want defense to be more important than civil rights. And Kennedy's like, yeah, whatever, bro. I don't really care. And then uh, awards go from last to first. So Kennedy gets one momentum. 
I don't like Kennedy's huge lead in endorsement, so I'm actually going to take an endorsement. An endorsement in the West. Very nice. And I get one more. An endorsement in the Midwest. That kicks him out there. And then I get one momentum marker for Nixon. Uh, then each one loses a cube. And last but certainly not least, we have campaign strategy and rest. Uh, card is played. And the card is played. Rest cubes go in the bag. Oh, nope, I screwed up. These go in the political capital bag, not back in there. Bag. All right, now we do not do a dual normal turn. It's debate time. And the debates work in a pretty simple way. First of all, we have to determine initiative. And this is not to determine who goes first necessarily. This is to determine who wins if there's a tie. We get one red, one blue, and two blue. So this means that Kennedy is gonna win all ties. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do, wait, four campaign strategy cards, there should be five. Right? Or do we not do it for the turn before the debates? Let me see here. The first five turns before the debates, players place exactly one card. That's got to be a typo then, because it keeps saying there's only that there's exactly four cards from the campaign strategy stacks. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. I'm looking at the wrong thing here. Yeah, I was looking at the wrong thing. Whoops. Um, so... Uh, each player is going to draw their five cards that they set aside for the debates. I'm just going to set it up so we each have our hands. Then we're going to take these issues in order. And we're going to set them on the debate board. Now, there are two very special events, both of which help John F. Kennedy. And we're going to put him in front of Kennedy. First of all, in each round, Nixon has to play first. Second, Kennedy gets plus one to every card for his debate. So this works in a pretty simple way. Uh, I need to rotate it like so. Each turn, we're going to take one card from our hands, and we're going to place it on one side of an issue, either the Kennedy side or the Nixon side. Once there's two cards on at least one side, that issue is resolved. Whoever has the most CP wins the issue. Um, but there's a benefit to being the last person to win a, de a debate issue, because you get a bigger reward for it. Um, but Nixon's got to choose first. And for the sake of not having to switch back and forth, I'm just going to go ahead and take Nixon's hand and I'm going to set it in front of us. Okay, so this is a Nixon's hand. Nixon wants to play the card that gives him the best chance to win an issue. And he's got a decent hand for economics, a decent hand for defense, and one that's actually going to hurt him for civil rights. So he's going to go ahead 
and place one card on defense. That's worth three points, but remember, all of Kennedy's cards are worth four points. But here's the intriguing thing that happened. I only picked one defense card, so he's actually going to set it over here on Nixon's side, which means this issue is considered one, and it was won by Nixon. So Nixon gets two state support cubes anywhere he wants, and checks don't matter. So he's going to say... Give me two in New York. All right. So that was the first debate. Um, and these cards are removed from the game. I believe, right? Do you debate? No, they get discarded. Uh, they get discarded, not removed from the game. So. It's now Nixon's turn. Again, Nixon has to pick first. He wants the strongest possible hand. Wait, did I actually put a defense? I did. I put a defense issue under next to economics. Sorry. No, I did it right. I did it correctly. Okay. Wait, no, I didn't. Huh? I'm so badly confused right now. Okay. Yeah, I played the wrong card. Okay, Nixon played the wrong card. He meant to play Nelson Rockefeller. It doesn't actually hurt anything. Uh, I just picked the wrong card to play. Sorry about that. Okay. So Nixon goes next. He's got a decent hand for either civil rights or for... Wait, that's not right. I'm going to try rewinding for a bit because I'm badly confused about where I messed up. Okay, here we go. I played the wrong card as Nixon. Okay, I was right. I should have played Nelson Rockefeller. But I still won. Hooray for me. And I'm still going to put the two cubes where I was going to put the two cubes. Which is uh, in New York. So that's fine. That's sorted now. Okay, so Nixon has a decent hand for either one of these. Although, he's really bad off in civil rights. Because he's actually going to end up conceding it to Kennedy. He's pretty. He feels pretty strongly about that. So he actually benefits from getting that resolved sooner rather than later. So he's going to put Adley Stevenson on Kennedy's side of the civil rights thing. But Kennedy doesn't want to reserve this one too quickly. So he's actually going to go ahead and play civil rights on the Dwight Eisenhower side. And mathematically, that actually means that Nixon can win that. Right? Right? Yeah, because his is four, mine is four. Nixon could actually... No, Kennedy's not going to... It would actually be stupid. Instead, he's going to get interested in the economy. He's going to go ahead and play this uh, on his side. That's worth a three, right? So Nixon can't believe his good fortune. Um, he could actually play rising food prices... And get the civil rights. Um, actually, Nixon is actually uniquely well prepared for these debates. Because I wasn't paying attention. And K 
Kennedy went super hardcore for civil rights and ignored the economic issue. Except for that one. And as soon as two cards are on one side or the other, that issue is considered one. Uh, we kind of want to play chicken here. Because as Nixon, I don't know what Kennedy has. I know that I have a dominating position in civil rights. But the last issue one is the most valuable issue. Because it's worth four state support cubes. So I think he's going to go ahead and play Nikita Khrushchev. No, Gary Powers as an economic issue. And now Kennedy's got to make a commitment. And his commitment is, I'm going to play a card on civil rights. And then Nixon has a choice. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and take the civil rights issue. Uh, so that is now the second issue one. It comes over here. And I get three more state support cubes. Which I'm going to go a one. A two. -hoo. A three. Three. No, three. Because four cubes on Ohio is more valuable. And then Kennedy would love to play a card for economics, but he can't. He doesn't have any, so he passes. And Nixon wins the US, the debates by a pretty large margin. That's four more cubes for him to place anywhere he likes. One in Pennsylvania. Two in California. I've got a stranglehold right now. I do not want anything sneaky happening to eliminate my chances of winning. And let's put a fourth cube on Illinois. So the debate board is no longer used in the game. All the cards for the debate are just discarded. The debate events are moved from the game. And we are nearly done, friends and neighbors, with our game of 1960. It's looking awfully bleak for Nixon, or for Kennedy, rather, uh, without question. Now, very important, uh, these last two turns, we each get seven cards, and we're going to be putting two cards into the campaign strategy. But now we most care about what the state is. So that's what we're looking at. And Kennedy really fucked up those debates. Um, that was a massive swing and has really locked down pretty much all of the high electoral count states. Um, Kennedy's going to have to hope for some pretty doggone big, uh, some pretty doggone big cards in this last two turns if they hope to change election day. So, uh, seven cards. Oh, sorry. First we do initiative. Which is going to go to Mr. Kennedy. He's going to get seven cards this time. Um... That is a massive card. That is so massive. Because, yes, he's got one momentum marker, but this basically means he can't campaign for a whole turn or risk losing some pretty great stuff. Ooh. Oh. This is a very powerful hand. And apart from Henry Cabot Lodge, 
they're all either good for Kennedy or they don't do anything for Nixon. So Kennedy's going to, I'm going first. And Nixon's like, what? You never do that. And then he drops this bombshell about Nixon's knee. So Nixon goes to Maryland. He's in Bethesda Hospital for knee surgery. And for the rest of the turn, I have to pay, as Nixon, one momentum marker to campaign anywhere. And Nixon's like, fuck. What else could Kennedy have if that's his opening move? I'm going to draw my seven cards and find out. And this is the nightmare scenario. Whoa. I have two cards that I can play that Kennedy can't just jump all over. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play the 1960 Civil Rights Act as a card here. Uh, as an event, that's the word I was looking for. So that's two... And I automatically gain one issue support in civil rights. All right. That was Nixon's turn. I have to remember to advance the phase track on Nixon's turn. But don't forget the incredibly important election uh, event. So I want to make sure that if I have any really important... I have New York. This is definitely going in the Kennedy pile. Or not in the Kennedy pile. This campaign strategy pile. Without question. Um, I can cripple the South. And they've got a pretty big lead there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start fucking shit up for them. Alright, East Harlem Pledge. One rust cube. Nixon loses his support on there. And then I get to kick five support out. No more than two per state. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. And remember, Nixon can't campaign without spending a momentum marker. Uh, he's going to go ahead and play Puerto Rican bishops for campaign points, I guess. Um, I guess he's just going to get really involved in the issues this time around. One on civil rights, and then the second cube is going to go over here to economics. And Kennedy is positively chortling with glee right now because there's really nothing. He's just going to keep throwing hammer blows over and over and over again. He could play swing state and try to retake New York or Pennsylvania. He needs some media cubes for that. And he's fine with that. He's going to go ahead and play Norman Vincent Peale. I could still eat it, sorry. Because Nixon can't trigger it because of the prevention event. And he's going to eliminate Nixon's media edge in the East. And replace it with one of his own. And that gets discarded. Now, Nixon has an important thing to think about. 
He literally has nothing else he can do this turn besides spend on media or issues. He can certainly challenge him there. He probably doesn't know why, though. He's, he's not certain why Kennedy felt the need to kick him out of the East. But anything else he plays... Oh, he's got to do that. He's got to do that. Uh, why? I really don't like late returns from Cook County, but these are all bad. And, I'm, and because I very stupidly, you know what? I'm going to say that I spent on defense instead of the economy because I would have seen that card. I'm going to go ahead and play this as an event. I am the leader in events, which lets me add three state support anywhere, no more than one per state. But most importantly, I get a momentum marker. And I can breathe a little bit easier about this god-awful hand I've got. It was three state support, right? Yeah. And here's the thing. I have the endorsement in the South. And I'm very likely to end up dominating all three issues. So I don't feel an overwhelming need to replace some of the stuff that's been taken from me. Instead, I want to weaken him in the Midwest. So I'm going to pull you out of Kentucky because that flips to me. That's one. Uh, I'm going to kick you out of Alabama for two. And I'm going to weaken you in Wisconsin for three. And I know I didn't address the media issue. This is one of the strategic things that you have to be concerned about when you're playing this game. I would see the Kennedy players smiling, and I'd be like, what did I do? What have I done? And then he plays Swing State. And I'm like, no! Because it's five state support in any state which is being led, and because of my media, I don't have to make support checks. New York is now back in the Democratic camp. And that is gigantic, especially when Nixon can't campaign. And uh, and you go to New York. Deleted. And Nixon only gets, I mean, Nixon does get two more cards to play, but he can't do anything about it. These are all bad cards. Um, Nixon doesn't want Illinois slipping from his grasp, so he's going to spend both of his momentum markers to play late returns from Cook County. And he's just going to go ahead and place one cube on the economy. And he got two rust cubes. One and two. And Kennedy's probably feeling pretty bummed about that. But I'm sure he'll get over it. And now he's got to start thinking, what cards do I want to keep? He definitely doesn't want to play Henry Cabot Lodge. And he definitely doesn't want to play Volunteers. Sorry, New York is really important. Oregon is worth six electoral votes. Arkansas is worth eight. Arkansas is, oh no, it's AK, that's Alaska. Yeah, Alaska's only three votes. Oregon's just the better call. So he's going to play 50 stars. And no one can trigger it. That's fine. Because nobody actually has more state support. And Kennedy is going to go one to Pennsylvania. He's going to kick Nixon out of the lead there. 
by two cubes. And he gains two rest cubes. I should always be doing the rest cubes first, but I keep forgetting. Okay, now he is eyeing Kennedy with two, and he's like, I have to play this card. And he doesn't want to lose New York. Minnesota's 11, Florida's 10. This is the best of a bad situation. And Kennedy just physically backflips. Well, not, I guess, mentally backflips. Spends his momentum marker, and he'll get to trigger that after I spend my 3 CP. Uh, I'm just going to build an insurmountable lead in civil rights and in defense. And Mr. Kennedy then triggers the event part of this. And it's five in the Midwest, no more than two per state. Um, he's going to take two out of Michigan. And then he's going to add one to Kentucky. And he's going to remove two from Illinois. There we go. There was nothing that the Nixon player could have done to stop that from happening. So Nixon's knee goes away, and we are now in the momentum phase. Momentum always decays first, nothing happens there. Nixon's law is more overall media support cubes, uh, but he has no point changing the issues. He's gonna get two momentum, and he wants two endorsements. He's tired of all of these Kennedy endorsements in the South, which means he's got a big advantage there. And in the Midwest. So all of a sudden, even though Nixon had some pretty bad campaign luck that turn, these endorsements make up for it. It basically means that anything that's empty automatically flips to the Republicans, regardless of how the state leans. Um, and then it's remove a cube on each issue. And now that phase is done. We go to strategy and other thing, a uh, rest. Those cards both get discarded. Rust cubes happen. Rust cubes happen. I almost did it again. I almost put it back in their bags instead of in the thing there. And then we go to the final actual turn of the game. Because next turn is just the election. So this is each of us having one more chance to make some moves. And it is now anybody's game. I still think because of the endorsements, Nixon has a pretty sizable advantage. But a lot is going to depend, I think, on those final checks, as we predicted that they would. And all of a sudden, Connecticut is looming large as a giant thing we need to be concerned about, both players. Because whoever takes Connecticut gets a bunch of support checks in California, which basically means I can guarantee it as Nixon or I can swap it as uh, Kennedy. So let's do initiative first. We got ourselves two reds, so Nixon gets to go first, if he wants to. That is seven cards for him. He 
Gaff is pretty powerful. Lyndon Johnson is scary. Nixon isn't bad. That is a massive card. It is unbelievably crucial that I play this card right now while I still can. So I'm going to go first, play Congressional Summer Session, and now Kennedy has minus two to all of his CP. And he has to go to either Maryland or Virginia. And he's going to pick Virginia, because at least that lets him make the most of it. Now, you'll notice a very interesting thing has happened. We're actually out of cards. Um, like, he's going to get these five campaign cards, but then all the discarded cards are going to get shuffled. And he'll get two more. There we go. All right. Uh, campaign headquarters is not a bad card to play. I definitely don't want some of these cards to trigger. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh no. This is a very bad hand for the Kennedy player. But he's got, and the really bad part is this event. Like this basically means campaigning is gonna fail. That is brutal. And there's a lot of pro Nixon events in my hand. So what he's going to do is he's going to play campaign headquarters as he's going to be like, this whole hand is fucking garbage. Perhaps this uh, whole hand is uh, fucking garbage. And he's going to say, thank you very much, card gods, for giving me a chance to get a mulligan on that god-awful opening hand. And this is better. It's still not perfect, but it's better. There's at least things that I can do that won't, uh, that won't necessarily help them. All right, so that is now phase two, and Nixon continues. Um, no, that's not very helpful. That's very useful under specific circumstances, but... Uh, hmm... I am going to play Northern Blacks. One Rust Cube. And I'm going to add two state support in New York. Flipping it back to Nixon. And then I can do two in Michigan and... I can do up to three more. I'm going to put two in Illinois and one in Michigan. And that's my turn. Now, remember, if Kennedy... It's minus two for everything. So Kennedy really wants to play cards as events. But that is also a thing that they can't really do. Uh, he's going to go ahead and play the new Nixon. Because he's not going to spend a momentum marker to get a momentum marker. That's just dumb. He's going to get one CP, not two. But he can at least start weakening support in Virginia. 
That's all you can do right now. And then we're on turn three. Or phase three, rather. Um... I'm going to play the old Nixon for campaigning. Because if I can lock down New York and Pennsylvania, it's pretty much over. One, two, three. Wait, that's super dumb. That's super dumb. Um, because I'm going to put it as two. I'm going to send one of my four cubes there. I'm going to come over to New Jersey. And I'm going to go remove one, add two. That is a much smarter play for me. All right. That was my turn. Um, which states would he like to keep? I think Pennsylvania is going to be huge. He's got to play the gathering momentum. He can't do anything about that. And if he doesn't trigger the event, Nixon will. So he's just going to play it for CP. And the Nixon's just going to say, yeah, hell yeah. He gets basically a free momentum and then free support in any empty state. Normally, again, the main player would get to do this first. But I'm just doing it now for the sake of saving some time. It also gives us Alaska and Hawaii. All right. Uh, and then they're going to get two CP. So he's going to plop one in Virginia for one. He's going to come over to Tennessee, and he's going to put one there for two. Now, Gaff is actually a pretty powerful card to play right now because the only reason I'm not playing Lyndon Johnson, but then again, more support checks in California and Texas could be quite good. Yeah, I'm going to play Harry F. Bird for media support. And Kennedy's probably like, wait, what? Why would you do that? And I'm saying to myself, I have a plan. Although, it's worth pointing out, um, I don't lead in Connecticut. But I have the World Series ends to get me there. So I have a plan. And Nixon and Kennedy's probably like, I don't even care. If, uh, what is he going to go after Massachusetts? Uh, he's got bigger fish to fry. And he's going to go ahead and play Nixon's Pledge as an event. Because the one thing he has to do right now is get all of the state support he can. Especially because of Nixon's endorsement in the South. So he's going to go Georgia for one. And Alabama for one. That does lose Illinois. Uh, he definitely would have probably liked to have that in his campaign deck, but it's more important to pick up the South for him. Uh, why did I delete that? That card was just used as an SCP. And we each get to play one more card, and then it's election time, my dudes. 
Um, and here's where he plays World Series Ends as an event. And all of a sudden he goes, oh. Because he can then take control of Connecticut. And it's not because Connecticut matters. It's because he definitely doesn't want California switching because of that. And then he's got three more state support. He can get anywhere he wants. He's going to go ahead and stick a cube here in Louisiana. And he's going to kick... Kennedy out of Wisconsin. That was what? Four cubes? Yeah, he still got one more. I guess let's add one in New York. Let's make sure that dog don't hunt. And so this means that I'll have Texas and California as my two election day cards. All right. Hostile press corps for CP. And let me make sure Hostile Press Corps isn't a big state. It's Pennsylvania. Oh, hell no. I'm not wasting that card. Let me use Missouri worth. Missouri is worth 13. I'd rather lose Kentucky. So I'm going to go ahead and play Nelson Rockefeller. And it gives... Yes, it gives him one state in New York. And it does let him get a card out of the discard pile. Which is only, like, Nixon is going to take Nixon's pledge because it gives him another option to take Illinois. But And then you get that. I'm oh, sorry, I should actually burn the momentum marker too. Because it's not automatic. And then I get one more CP. He's going to go ahead and take defense. That's what he's going to do with his last action. And then that is removed from the game. As is that. All right. So now we do momentum. This is important. Momentum actually has a value, which is why Kennedy snuck in there to grab stuff. Um, so first thing I'm is the momentum decays. That's fine. I can switch issue order. Um, I'm not going to do that. Kennedy gets one momentum. Um, I'm going to take an endorsement if I'm Nixon. No, I get one already. I'm going to take two momentum. Momentum is actually more valuable, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, endorsement in the east. Great. Uh, issue support, so no one's going to get anything from these. These actually turn into bonus cubes, into the political capital bag, so it's actually not the best for either of us. Finally, Kennedy, you're going to put in your two campaign strategy cards. We're going to take your rest cubes. I'm going to switch order being Nixon for a second, because I do have a decision to make, which is which of these I want to keep most. I'm already going to get a bunch of checks in California, so I'm going to go ahead and stick Illinois and Texas in here. And then California gets discarded here. And now, friends and neighbors, comrades, pals, 
it's election day. So, the first thing we do election day is we had all of the media cubes we've ever had get added to the political capital bag. First we get bonus cubes and then the actual cubes get deposited. So I have a total of five. So I'm gonna do one, two, three. I said three. Oh, they both got dropped. Four, five. Then the cubes themselves go in the bag. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and then momentum markers each turn into two cubes in the political capital bag. So that's going to be four. One, two, three, four. Uh, I got three momentum markers. So I get six as Nixon. Next, we do an initiative check. Okay, so Kennedy actually gets to start playing his campaign strategy cards first. And then those just go back in the supply. Now, let me make sure that it's not that does he go first or does he pick who goes first? Yeah, initiative always says who goes first. Um, Kennedy would actually rather have Nixon go first, in all honesty, because that way he has a chance to, to use his campaign strategy deck to do some pretty crazy things. All right, so starting with Nixon, because Kennedy said, I'm gonna let you go first. Uh, but the election day events actually happen after this. So the next thing that happens is we're each going to reveal four cards and we're going to conduct three support checks. So that means for every red cube I draw, those get added to the appropriate state. So I have Texas. Um, I don't even care. Just go away. So I'm going to pull three cubes out of the bag. Blue, red, so I get one more in Texas. And then two blue cubes go back into the supply. I have Nixon's pledge. This is for Illinois. One, two, three. One more cube for Illinois. I did shuffle the bag, right? I better shuffle it again just to be sure. I'm pretty sure I did though. We have Minnesota. And this one actually could matter because it could give us some more votes. Uh, I at least kicked him out. All right. And then finally, we have Catholic support in New York. This is kind of gilding the lily. And of course, we get three red cubes. There's a lot of cubes here now. Safe to say that Nixon won New York by a lot. Okay, next Kennedy does his. And things are looking awfully grim. Uh, he's definitely in a world of hurt. But he could get lucky. He could get lucky. But we're just going to have to see. Pennsylvania. If he gets three blue cubes, it'll swap. But instead, he drew two, two reds and a blue. That's not good enough.
unfortunately for Kennedy, that was one of his main places that he could have gained big time. And it didn't work. Missouri. Uh, he can only really strengthen his lead there. And he's certainly not going to say no to that. New York. Uh, this is not likely to make a difference. Oh boy, I removed one of the Tower of Power from New York City. Oh well. And finally, Oregon. This is the only state he could potentially win. Uh, he would need two blue cubes and he got none. So election day went real bad for Kennedy, and it's about to get worse because now the election events trigger. And there's only actually one, but it's a nasty one. Um, I'm not going to do this. I mean, I can, I guess. Just see how many ridiculous cubes I can get in California. Yeah, so California is real, real one. By, uh, by Team Nixon. All right, so the final thing we do is we go to each state in the union and we decide who won what. So as a reminder, states go to whoever has the cube. If there is no cube, it goes to whoever has the endorsement. If there's no endorsement, it goes to whoever has the edge. So Alaska and Hawaii both go to Nixon. And we're going to flip them over because then it actually tells you how many things that they are worth. California is Team Nixon. Which makes sense. I mean, it was, it is Nixon's home state and typically people from their home state tend to win that state in elections. Sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. Um... I mean, I don't think that in the most recent election, for instance, that Joe Biden's winning of Delaware actually made a difference since Delaware has three electoral votes. Um, we have Oregon for Nixon. Washington goes Nixon. Idaho goes Nixon. Nevada goes Nixon. Montana goes Nixon. I'm so, I hope you're sensing a theme here, which is that things did not go well for the Democrats in the West. I'm just throwing cubes at this point. I don't even care where they go. I just want them off the seals. We'll go yeet. Uh, don't worry. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the Kennedy's marker so they're clearly elsewhere where they need to be. Oh dear. Um. Hup, hup. All right. That was just the West, and to say that he wanted in convincing fashion is an understatement for sure what the what the what okay uh here we go for texas louisiana finally we have some actual wins for the democrats they got arkansas they got Mississippi. They got Alabama. They got Tennessee. They got South Carolina. Uh, Georgia. Okay, Florida. Because of Nixon's endorsement, it goes to Nixon. It would have anyway, though. 
because it edges uh, it edges Republican. And then North Carolina goes to Nixon. Uh, Midwest endorsement, Minnesota goes to Nixon. Wisconsin goes to Nixon. Missouri does go to Kennedy. Iowa goes to Nixon. Uh, Illinois goes to Nixon. Indiana does go to Kennedy. Michigan goes to Nixon, because there are red cubes on it, remember. Uh, I just flung Kentucky across the map, but that actually goes to the Democrats. Uh, and then Ohio very much goes for Nixon. All right, finally the East. Oh, I forgot one Southern state. Um, oh no, come back Virginia. Thank you. Uh, Virginia did go to Kennedy. Uh, West Virginia goes to Nixon. New York is Nixon. Pennsylvania goes to Nixon. Maryland, Nixon. Delaware, Nixon. Uh, New Jersey, Nixon. Connecticut, Nixon. Oh, I did it again. No, come back, Maine. Maine Nixon. New Hampshire Nixon. Vermont Nixon. However, good news. Kennedy got Massachusetts and, uh, and Rhode Island. All the state seals have been awarded. And I hope it's obvious to you that Nixon won this game in a landslide, but we're going to do some math. If, is there a calculator in the components? Here we go, tools, calculator. All right, we're just going to use this to get Kennedy's, and then we'll subtract 537 and know who got what. So, 10 plus 4 plus... Wait, what? Okay, you have to hit the equals button for it to actually equal out. Got it. Plus 13, plus 12, plus 8, plus 11, plus 16 plus 8 plus 8. Hang on, I gotta do this again. Alright. 10 plus 4 plus 13 plus 13 plus 12 plus 12 8 plus 11 plus 16 plus 8 plus 8 plus 11. Kennedy got 126 electoral votes. And if you remember, there's 537 available, which means, sorry. So what was actually the closest, uh, the second closest election in American history where the popular vote winner won 
was won by Nixon by a lot. 411 electoral votes to 126. It's still not the most one-sided because remember Washington won unanimously in both of his terms. But that's yikes. In a contested American election, that is the largest margin of victory, I do believe. Um, so there you have it. That was 1960, the making of the president. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this game. Um, it's one of my favorites because there's so many interesting ways that the game can turn out and there's so many strategies for success. Um, this was one with good old fashioned legwork. I think Kennedy focused too much on the awesome events he got and not enough on campaigning. But it really happened. If I could say one card that changed this game, it was when Nixon got momentum in the East, a uh, gathering momentum in the East. Because it basically ensured that for the rest of the game, Kennedy was playing catch up in the East. And he had to spend so much time and energy trying to whittle down New York and Pennsylvania that Nixon was able to flank him and take most of the South. And take the West, which he would have won anyway. Like, the West was not a big win for Nixon. But he really fought hard in the Midwest, too. So, yeah, strategically, one card can be a big deal. And don't discount endorsements. Even though by the end of the game, it's rare that you'll have an empty space, one or two states can change everything. And I think the most interesting thing that I should have considered with uh, Kennedy that I just never did was spending CP a bit more on media support cubes. Um, because that was something that Nixon had early on and never let go. Um, I think I also focus a little bit too much on the issues as Kennedy. Because uh, momentum markers seem awesome, and they are. But I think it's a little bit too... I think that's a short-sighted strategy of just trying to get as many momentum markers a turn because all it takes is your opponent to have a handful of cards that don't have your symbol on them and those momentum markers are useless. Um, I will say that in my version of 1960, the newer version, there's eight more cards in the deck. I think it's eight. Uh, let me check that out. No, it's six, because there's 91 cards in the there's 97 and the other one. I don't know what the other six cards are, but I'm willing to bet they probably help Kennedy out a bit more. Um, the other thing that didn't happen the entire game is neither one of us ever got to unexhaust our, our, our person, which is really odd, and I think it's something they've done to rebalance the game a little bit in the newer version. I think it's a little bit easier to unexhaust your, to restore your candidate card. Because otherwise it just never changes and you're just stuck with it forever, which is kind of a downer. Um, but that is, that was 1960. Uh, a glorious victory for Nixon. How does that change American history being 1960? I have no idea. Um, who knows? Maybe John F. Kennedy isn't assassinated in 63, and he runs in 64. Um, maybe Lyndon Baines Johnson never runs for president. Um, maybe Richard M. Nixon is a beloved president in American history rather than widely considered to be one of the worst. Who knows? But I'll tell you what I do know, which is that this has been of Indian. Thank you for watching. And... I bid you a wonderful day. Also, although I've already bid you good day, so I should just end the video. Hannibal, Rome versus Carthage, next week. See you then.